John Cleese inside the inside the armor, right? And um, none shall pass, right? So he's the bad guy, you know. He's not going to let anybody pass. And so, um, uh, his name, um, the other actor, nonetheless, he comes to him with a sword. King Arthur, he says, uh, no, I want to pass. And none shall pass. Anyway, he chops an arm off and he's looks at the arm and he's, he sees that he's missing an arm and he looks up. No, it's just a flesh wound. He chops the other arm and, and, and uh, of course, uh, says, look, you're defeated. And, and um, the, the Dark Knight says, no, uh, no, you know, I'll kick you, I'll, I'll spit on you and, and making all these threats, uh, threats until the moment when um, King Arthur realised that he was done. You know, he's, he, and he was done. So that's what the, the bad guys are all about. The dark forces have no future. There's no life for them in the, in the kingdom to come. Where the sun is taking us right now, um, and the minds tell us clearly, there will be three days of darkness after which the uh, sixth sun will be uh, reborn in a different place, in a different time, in a different world, in a different ethereal element. And we, the microcosm, go with Big Brother, the critical the macrocosm and where it takes us there's no room for the baddies yeah great sketch I uh, see there oh, I was a big uh, Monty Python fan when I grew up on a tobacco farm uh, all my cousins and all my friends we used to get together at night and we used to do Monty Python skits till the end of till early morning hours and and uh, you know if you haven't seen the life of Brian yet I recommend to every human being on the planet to watch it because it really does do a good job at uh, exposing and showing how these theocrats who are, you know, these mechanists who are killing you because of their messiah <laughs> are it's so ridiculous and grotesque. And it's a beautiful comedy and one of the, it's my second favourite comedy of all time and um, the uh, Holy Grail the first <laughs> that's how big a Monty Python fan I was how do you fit the unseen astrology but they've always been part of a higher octave so Uranus is a higher octave of the moon he has the same virtues uh, Neptune has, is a higher octave of Venus he has the same virtues now how, how do we uh, appreciate the um, the influences of these higher octave planets, the unseen ones. Well, here's an interesting fact for you. Uh, between 1956 and 1970, Neptune, the uh, octave of Venus, the planet of love and sensuality in our solar system, so she would represent the, the five senses and the lust of the and the feeling and the heart and the emotions and the feminine things. Um, well, Neptune was in the sign of Scorpio between 1957 and 1970. Well, Scorpio is a generative area in the male testes and the uh, ovaries in the woman. So Neptune was stimulating evolution of that period. So that's how you would, um, you know, you would uh, perceive the influences of the unseen planets in the holy science. They were aware of them. Oh, yes. But they concerned themselves with the seven. Why? Because the seven, the number seven is sept. And the septenary is the octave, the ogdo. And the septenary is always uh, referred to as the serpent. Same word. Serpentary. Septenary. So Quetzalcoatl, you can rest assured, is a septenary just like we. We are septenary. We have seven vital organs, seven or in me. We have seven chambers in the brain, seven chambers in the heart, seven chakras, everything. We are a septenary. We are a septenary, and everything we see in nature is a septenary. They have the same root word, 
So the little spirals that create all the energy forms, all the vis visible forms in the universe, those little spirals are spirits, and they create a sine wave, and sine is spelt just like sin. They are the same, they have the same root word, sine, sine wave and sin wave, it's the same thing. So when we are trapped in matter and we are spiraling in the sine wave, we are sinners. We are sinners in the kingdom of Satan. Saturn, because Saturn keeps time, and time is a sine wave, a sin wave. And yes, lucky number seven, exactly, good point. Now I see that question, uh, <laughs> good. Uh, okay, so um, Monty Python were ahead of their times and used irony to speak the truth. Oh yes, they did. They were illumined people. I wouldn't be surprised if they were, um, you know, followers of some sort of esoteric science. Pretty much like the rock and rollers of the 70s, like Jimmy Page, who was a big fan of Aleister Crowley. Um, and uh, Black Sabbath's um, lead singer. If you notice their lyrics, they are both fire signs. Robert Plant is a Leo and... Um, now, Ozzy Osbourne was a Sagittarian. Now, these fire signs are very mystical because fire is mist. Mystic. Whereas air is mind, water is emotion, and earth is, um, is um, senses. So the, these guys, they were very much involved to crowd and spirituality and mysticism is... is Pay attention to some of the lyrics. Now, you know, some people think, oh, boy, these dark bands, they were, um, you know, off, they were um, uh, heavy metal or whatnot. No, I would give them a second go. And, and um, the lyrics of Black Sabbath were very, very liberating and illuminating. Um, you know, they, had, they were ahead of their time, those guys, too, in the mm -hmm. 70s. They were big, big fans. And, and, and I can say the same for Pink Floyd. They were a very illuminated band, and, and basically they, they funded Monty Python. Uh, Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin funded their um, the Holy Grail. Uh, so they were all sort of ahead of their time, those guys from the 70s, and uh, I suspect Neptune in uh, Scorpio had a lot to do with that. Okay, uh, am I missing any questions? Have I ever experienced the out-of-body experiences? Yes. Yeah. People, the best way to do this is to withdraw into yourself, withdraw the five senses, bring them in, go within, and search inside. Because that's where all the treasures are. The treasures are in you. You are glorious. You are divine. You are everything that is. Everything that ever will be. Everything that and is. everything that was. And everything that was. And, um, and um, uh, LSD, yeah, look, LSD is not the bad guy that we've been taught to. Uh, uh, the media did a, a wonderful job of trying to um, discredit um, LSD. We had Aldous Huxley and uh, Timothy Leary, and we have the Beatles, many, many people. We have Francis Crick, who dis discovered DNA on a on an LSD trip. Um, we have many people, uh, Napoleon uh, Hill, and we have a lot of um, great people who took entheogens. Now, entheogens are the plants, the sacred plant, that give you theos, that give you God, that give you godness or the deity. And they are psychedelics and hallucinogens. Not to be confused with narcotics and barbiturates. You see, this war on drugs and, oh, don't you take those some mind-altering drugs because you'll go to the devil. Well, you know, there's, there's bad drugs like everything. Like everything, there are bad drugs. There are... Uh, laboratory designed drugs to do damage that the elites have designed like ecstasy and crack and cocaine and all this rubbish um, you know 
these are these sort of things are to be avoided at all costs. Take in theogens um, and LSD. There are many, many great doctors around the world who are curing people from depression, suicidal tendencies, um, all sorts of complaints and problems and trauma with it, with one dose of LSD. Because if you ever take or ask anyone who has, who's done it responsibly, and who's done it. Um, you know, a lot of reverence, they will tell you the benefits. The benefits are there. They are clearly there. Um, but they're not for everybody. So that's where meditation is king. Um, the other ways to enlightenment and out-of-body experiences, believe it or not, would be uh, sacred sex. Um, Sex is a divine, wonderful gift that needs to be worked out. Now, in, in order to know what to do with it, I would suggest to read, please, the one and only book, the greatest hermetic wisdom that you will ever find on the planet, and that is always Thomas H. Burboy. In here, there is a chapter dealing with sex. And... Um, I would read it. I would read it real nice and quick because you've probably got a partner. Or you're probably in a relationship where you'd probably like to improve that aspect for spiritual and mystical experience. And unfortunately, too many people are messing with it that don't know what to do with it. And in, um, in the esotericist's words, they are sinning because they are wasting energy. Sacred energy. There's only one sin, if you could call it a sin, okay, that's something that is dark in the universe and that is, that is considered to be doing evil, and that would be the waste of energy. And for a, a male in particular, um, you know, so is always encouraged and taught to be able to contain the orgasm and rise above it in sexual practices. Um, for a woman, it's so, so crucial because they're not um, they're not giving something. You see, a, ma a male when he has an orgasm is um, uh, giving of a sacred fluid, which is life giving, which has force, which has protein, which has divinity in it. It's spirit, because the egg, the sperm, which gives life in the womb of the woman. Um, this is sacred. It's the spiritual part of our nature. It's transmitted by the male. And to go wasting this energy is sacrilege. It's not a sin to have an orgasm. For it. it's, that's not what they're saying. But, but for a male, it's important that he understand how he can practice sexuality and sex without having to have the orgasm. Okay, so, um, and there's a lot more to be said about that. I, I don't want to go on and on, but, I um, mean, if, if you want to discuss uh, that at a future time, there's plenty of information that I can research. Uh, so, so that would be the three doors, the entheogens, the meditation, and the sexual practices. And But I'm not recommending, and, and, and I'm not... And I'm not promoting anything because each one is a priest unto themselves and they must, you know, seek what is good for them. But, you know, because everybody has their own constraints and uh, conditions to consider and everybody's on a different different path in their spiritual, a different growth and, and different um, development. Okay. So, the name of the book is The Light of Egypt, the Science of the I always begin the sine wave at Aries, at the equator, then I go up to Cancer, and I go down through Libra, then I go down to Capricorn and up through. This is expounded on in this book. This is the book to read. You will know the science of as above, so below. 
forevermore when you delve into these pages. Um, Hermes was, Trismegistus, was he a man or the planet Mercury? Well, as above, so below. 